Okay, we're back, hopefully. Let me see, let me bring up both these live feeds. YouTube, we're back. Facebook, we're back. Now we're gonna take this as though we just came back from the break because I guess all this happened right after we came back. We'll start again at John chapter 10 and verse 11. Yeah, sorry for the hassle, guys. Um, in verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. You think the shepherd is going to give his life for the goats that don't belong to him? Uh, no, just the sheep. Now notice, Let me get back over here to my concordance. I took all of this, all these tabs I had open, I took them down. What was the one I had just had up? Oh, I was talking about the temple. Let's start going through these scriptures. In verse 11 of John chapter 10, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep, not the goats. All right. In verse 12, but he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, those who make money serving God and they don't really love him or the sheep. It says, but he that is an hireling and not the shepherd. Whose own the sheep or not. Seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. This is a hireling. Now the hireling doesn't, he's the hirelings are the ones who they say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and in your name cast out devils and done many wonderful works. And he will say, I know you not. Depart from me, ye who work in, worketh iniquity. He doesn't know them. They are not his sheep. Okay? In verse 13, the hireling fleeth. Because he is in a hireling and careth not for the sheep. Well, he, the hireling doesn't care for the king either. Because if he loved the king, he would love what the king loves, and that's the sheep. He would love the sheep. So the hirelings, they don't love the king, and they don't love the sheep. They don't care for the sheep. If they love the king, they would care for the sheep, even if they don't know him, because they care about what he thinks. In verse 14 of John chapter 10, I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep. And have known and am known of mine. Think about that. Did we just get knocked off again? Why is everything frozen? Are we still okay, Troy? On my Skype, it looks like we're frozen. Hello. Oh, okay. Thank you. Roger that. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. I guess we're okay. My live feed that I'm looking at is frozen. That's why I was wondering. Troy's going to reset that for me, but he says you guys are okay. So I'm going to keep going. Now in John 10, 14, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep. He knows each and every one of us by name. And am known of mine. We also love him, respect him, reverence him. Okay? Even if we don't know him, we reverence God. We don't hate God. We love God. We want to be pleasing to God. So anyone who wants to be pleasing to God is one of his sheep. It's an internal thing. 
the temple inside you, if you have a temple inside you, Jesus is inside you. Okay. He resides within the temple in each one of his sheep. And if I write on my shirt, I'm going to be really mad at myself. In verse 15 of John chapter 10, as the father knoweth me, even so I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep, not for the goats, not for the tares. It's for the sheep, the wheat. In verse 16, and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. These are Gentiles. Them also I must bring and they shall hear my voice and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. They hear his voice. Did you hear that? And they shall hear my voice. Did you, did you say something, Troy? Okay. Them also I must bring and they shall hear my voice. If you are one of his sheep, you will hear his voice and you will follow him when he calls you. Now, don't go thinking just because he hasn't called you yet that you're not one of his sheep. That doesn't mean anything if he hasn't called you yet. It just means timing. He will call you in his timing if you are one of his sheep. He leaves the 90 and 9 to go after the 1. So he's not going to let you slip through his fingers. Okay? And they shall hear my voice and there shall be one fold and one shepherd, both Jews and Gentiles. Now, let's go and look at chapter 10, verse 27. Ah, actually, let's look at 25 where Jesus starts talking again. John chapter 10, verse 25. We're going to skip down here. Jesus answered them. Okay, in verse 24, let's look at that one. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Then Jesus answered them, I told you, and you believed not. See, he told them, but they don't hear his voice. They don't believe him. They follow a stranger because they're not the Lord's sheep. He says, I told you and you believe not. The works that I do in my father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep. <laughs> Those that don't believe him are not his sheep. It's not that they are his sheep and they just uh, can't believe him. The seeing eye and the hearing ear, the Lord hath made both of them. He gives his sheep a seeing eye and a hearing ear to hear his voice. He says in 26 there, but ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep. He's telling this to those Jews and religious leaders that he was addressing. He said, ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep. If you believe him, you're his sheep. If you don't, you're not. But ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep. You're, they don't belong to him. So they don't believe him. As I said unto you in verse 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. It's not that they decide to follow Jesus. My sheep hear my voice and I know them. And they follow me. Remember the foolish virgins? He tells them, I know you not. They aren't sheep. They're goats. The foolish virgins are goats. My sheep hear my voice and I know them. Well, why does he tell the foolish virgins? I know you not. Why does he tell those that say unto him, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and cast out devils and done many wonderful works? He says, depart from me, ye who work iniquity. I know you not. I don't know you. He knows his own. 
his own will believe him and those who are not of his own will not believe him. Look, 26, but ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep. Ye are not of my sheep. That's what he says. You don't believe because you're not one of my sheep. If you were one of his sheep, you would believe him. In verse 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Look at, let's see. He says, and I know them. Remember 2 Timothy 2.19, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Look at, keep your spot there and look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, I believe. And verse 14. No, wait a minute. That's not the one I'm after. Uh, 8, 3. 1 Corinthians 8, 3, I think. Yes. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 3. Forgive me, I'm not as good with the references because I listen to the scripture on my headphones. Oh, there's my pen. 1 Corinthians 8, 3. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. If you love God, he knows you. That's what that's saying. If, but if any man love God, the same is known of him. You can't love God unless God knows you. Okay? If any man love God, the same is known of him. God knows those that are his. In 2 Timothy 2.19, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Well, then let's go over real quick to Matthew chapter 25. And let's look at verse 11. Afterward came also the other virgins. These were the foolish virgins saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, verily, I say unto you, I know you not. They aren't his sheep. He doesn't know them. Remember, he told the false teachers. I don't know you. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out devils and done many wonderful works? He says, depart from me, ye work, who work iniquity. I know you not. He doesn't know them, so they can't be his sheep. The foolish virgins here in Matthew 25, 12. But he answered and said, verily I say unto you, I know you not. That means they're not his sheep. Did you, are you picking up on this? Very important. Very important. Now let's go back over to John. Did you keep your spot? In John, now let's look at, let's go, let's start again at 25. Jesus answered them, I told you and ye believed not. John 10, 25. I told you and ye believed not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. So there's witnesses and everything and they still can't believe because they're not his sheep. In verse 26, but ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep. Ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice and I know them. He knows every single one who is his sheep. The foolish virgins, they're not his sheep. The false teachers, they're not his sheep. Okay. The religious leaders, they're not his sheep. Those that he was scolding. The religious leaders who are his sheep were like Nicodemus. No man can come unto me except the father who sent me draw him and I will raise him up at the last day. And it clearly says that I hate that word clearly. It actually says that Nicodemus was drawn to Jesus by night. <laughs> that's a verification of the scripture and how it works. They're, that's right. They're not his sheep. 
That is exactly right, Troy. In verse 28, and I give unto them who his own sheep, eternal life, his own sheep, and they shall never perish. Never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. You cannot be lost if you belong to Jesus because he will leave the 90 and 9 to come after you. You will not slip through his fingers. He will not lose a single one. Let me show you something. I'm going to look up the word nothing. Because uh, the scripture that I'm after contains that word. Uh, what, uh, what the Father hath given me, I shall lose nothing. Let me find it. I think it's in John. Ah. John 6, 39. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, not a single one, but should raise it up again at the last day. Not a single child of God will be lost. When God is your parent and in control of whether or not his own children perish, they do not perish. If you as a parent are in control of whether or not your child is destroyed, they are not destroyed. And God is in control of that. So neither, it says, I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Nobody can take you away from your shepherd. In verse 29, my father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. No, you cannot be lost if you are one of the king's sheep. It's impossible. Then he says, I and my father are one. Did you know that Jesus is the almighty God in a flesh body? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. <laughs> they wanted to stone him. Now, let's look at John 13, 18. Now, I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. So Jesus is making it clear that he knew Judas was a traitor from the day he chose him. It's not like the king was blindsided by Judas's treachery. No, he wasn't. He knew Judas was going to betray him before he ever chose him as a disciple. Okay? That is, he knew but he needed to choose Judas because he came to die, not to sit on a throne the first time. He came to die. And so those of, of you out there that think, well, if he's all-knowing, why'd he choose Judas? Because he needed a betrayer in his inner circle. That's why. He's in control of all things. Now, um, oh, let's look at 19. Um, now I tell you before it come that when it is come to pass, you may believe that I am he. he Jesus told him all, everything that was going to happen before it ever happened. In verse 20, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. So he's saying that when he sends someone with the truth, that the sheep will hear them when, there's, when they are 
speaking his words. They hear his voice in those words. Okay. He that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me. So when we're speaking his words, the children of God do receive them because they receive him. And he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me, which is God the Father, the invisible God on the throne. So see, he was telling in verse 21, when Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. He knew uh, before he ever chose Judas as a disciple that he was a thief and a betrayer. <laughs> he knew it already. Okay. Isn't that kind of cool? Okay. Now, um, let me come over here. There's more. There's more. And we're going to we're going to build line upon line and precept upon precept, which is how we learn according to the word. Line upon line, precept upon precept. Let me find my I'm going to go over here. And if you want to follow along, you can go to your concordance. Any concordance will do. I use one called abibleconcordance.com. And look up the word sheep. And it'll bring up every scripture in the Bible that has the word sheep in it. We're going to take a real quick break. And when we come back, we're going to go through all these scriptures and we're going to solidify what we're trying to teach here right after this. <laughs> 